Support for this podcast comes from the law firm of Davis Malm. Whether you're a developer, property owner, manager, or commercial tenant, their real estate attorneys know the lay of the land, not just the law. Learn more at davismalm.com. WBUR Podcasts, Boston. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and you're listening to The Common. WBUR senior health reporter Priyanka Dayal McCluskey, welcome back. Thanks for having me back. Yes, yes, so soon at that. So, Priyanka, you've been following the story of Stewart Healthcare System, which operates nine hospitals in Massachusetts. Now, This hospital chain says it is in financial distress, and that can lead to some big problems for state residents under its care and its workers. So, Priyanka, let's jump right in because this sounds like a huge deal for the state with, you know, many of our elected officials weighing in. So start us off by telling us a little bit more about Stewart Health and their financial troubles. Sure. So let me give you a little history of Steward. Steward Healthcare is one of the largest hospital operators in the state. They started back in 2010 taking over the hospitals that were formerly run by the Archdiocese, the the Caritas Christi hospitals. Mm -hmm. And Steward came in with the backing of a private equity firm from New York called Cerberus Capital Management. And they, they came in and said, we have this financing and we are going to save these hospitals, essentially. And so that's the history of Steward. They started right here in Boston. And since that time, they've gone national and have uh, many hospitals across the country. Got it. Got it. I thought they were based in Texas. Did I read that wrong? You're right. They moved from Boston to Dallas several years ago. Ah, okay. All right. So this private equity group came in to buy these hospitals that used to be owned by the archdiocese. They wanted to save the hospitals. How did they get to this point where they are in such financial trouble. How did those issues come to light? Yeah, so some of this has been building over time. There has been reports about Steward not being able to pay its bills, uh, pay people working for them, pay their vendors. And I want to highlight some of the the reporting that's been out there from other outlets, including the Boston Globe, um, Wall Street Journal, and other outlets that have been following this story as well. You know, earlier this month, there's a company called Medical Properties Trust. And this is a real estate company Mm -hmm. that actually owns the Stewart Hospitals. They said Stewart is $50 million behind on rent. $50 million? Yes. And the company's also facing lawsuits from other vendors that have said, you know, Stewart is not paying us. So a lot has come to light in just the past couple of weeks. How does that even happen? How do you get behind on your rent $50 million? That's a great question. There is a lot that we don't know, and I might say that a couple times during this conversation because Stewart is privately owned and they don't disclose much information about how they operate. And that makes them really different from other companies, especially in Massachusetts, where most of our hospitals are structured as nonprofits Mm -hmm. and they disclose a lot of financial information. And even the other for-profit hospitals in this state, they still submit their information to the state. And um, Steward is the only one that does not routinely do this. They do not disclose their full financial picture, even though it's required for all hospital companies in Massachusetts. A lot of questions to be answered there. But let's focus on the patients. Who exactly does Steward serve? Steward serves a lot of patients who are lower income, communities of color, the elderly, a lot of people covered by Medicare and Medicaid programs, and many of them don't necessarily have a lot of other health care options close to home. Some of the steward facilities are in communities like Brighton, Dorchester, Brockton, Ayer, Haverhill, Methuen. So those are some of the communities that they're in. Mm-hmm. What kind of ripple effects can we expect to see in the medical industry here in our region, especially considering, you know, who who the patients are at Stewart? 
Yeah, so this is what I've been hearing so much of in the past few days, and I've been talking to lots of people who work in healthcare in the state, and what I keep hearing is our hospitals and our healthcare system are already quite busy. There's a lot of long wait times for patients at many hospitals already. So what happens if Stewart Hospitals, one or more, end up closing or, you know, lose beds or, you know, can the state really afford to lose any more hospital space? We're still recovering from COVID. That's part of it. Then there's just a lot of people who need care, uh, who are waiting, you know, hours or sometimes days for, for the care that they need at hospitals. So there's a lot of concern that, you know, this could just add even more pressure to the rest of the healthcare system. We're going to take a break, but we'll be right back. Politics has never been stranger or more online, which is why the politics team at Wired is making a new show, Wired Politics Lab. It's all about how to navigate the endless stream of news and information and what to look out for. Each week on the show, we'll dig into far-right platforms, AI chatbots, influencer campaigns, and so much more. Wired Politics Lab launches Thursday, April 11th. Follow the show wherever you get your podcasts. And we're back with more from Priyanka. Okay, what is the state's plan to make sure that steward patients can still get care? We are trying to find the answers to that really important question. And what the governor has said so far is she's focused on the patients, the people who work for Steward, their jobs, and just making sure the whole healthcare system is stable. Our focus is going to be on making sure that patients across this state, including anywhere where there is a, a Steward facility, have access to care, are protected, the jobs are protected. How? How are you going to do that? Here's where I say again that there's a lot we don't know. <laughs> so what, what I can tell you is that top officials in the Healy administration have been talking about this. They've been meeting with other healthcare leaders. They've been meeting with people who run other hospitals and labor unions across the state. And we know that discussions are underway and that a lot of options are being discussed, but we don't know exactly what they plan to do next. And I did ask Governor Healy about this a few days ago, and she said that um, they're waiting for more details from Steward as well. They Mm want to see a plan from Steward. Got it. You know, you mentioned labor unions. I'm thinking employment, you know, workers. Did you talk to any staff from Stewart about this to get their concerns? So just to give you a sense of what a significant employer they are, Stewart employs about 14,000 people across Massachusetts, mm. especially in the communities where their hospitals are. They're likely a major employer in those communities. Mm-hmm. And people are worried about their jobs, but there's just so much uncertainty about what's going on and what's going to happen. And it really feels like a situation that's changing day to day, if not even sometimes by the hour. And people are just trying to understand what comes next. Can Stewart face legal consequences? I saw Attorney General Andrea Campbell weigh in on this issue. Yes, and she hinted that she will be looking into this, although right now the main focus is to make sure that people have access to care. We've also heard members of Congress say that there should be more investigation into what's going on here. So, you know, too soon to say, but it's certainly possible that they're at least going to be under further investigation. Is there any chance this could lead to any changes in legislation when it comes to for-profit health care. How is our state legislature looking at this? We know that state lawmakers are talking about this and looking at this, having private discussions about this, and as I said, members of Congress as well. So it's certainly possible that there will be looking at legislation, although we haven't heard of a plan for a specific bill at this time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, this sounds like a big developing story. (laughs) There's a lot of questions to be answered. What are some of those questions for you? What will you be looking out for? 
Yeah, I feel like we maybe have more questions and answers still at mm-hmm. this point. So definitely we're watching to see what happens with health care at these steward facilities. Do all of the facilities continue operating? Are there plans to close any facilities? And what does that mean for the jobs and for the patients? Is it possible that other healthcare providers may step in and provide services where steward may not continue? Is it possible the state will play a bigger role in a sort of receivership model? That's a possibility that's come up, although we don't know if that's going to happen. And in the longer term, how are we going to look at for-profit companies and private equity in particular coming into the Massachusetts healthcare space? And one of the experts I spoke with is John McDonough at the Harvard School of Public Health, and here's how he puts it. If there's a lesson for this, it is it is that the entire state health system and state government need to be much more wary of all for-profit entrance into the hospital and other key health system markets, and particularly be wary of the private equity brand. Wow, that answered a question that I had, basically, which is, does this reflect a hazard to the public when for-profit entities get into the healthcare space? A lot of people would say that private equity shouldn't be so involved in healthcare because their goals may be different from, you know, the goal of a healthcare provider. Private equity is about return on investment for the investors, and does that always go hand-in-hand with providing much needed health care to lower income communities. You know, that that is something that a lot of folks are, are talking about right now. Yeah. And I mean, to illustrate the seriousness of that, somebody actually died as a result of this situation with Stewart, right? Yes, there was a really heartbreaking story in the Boston Globe about a new mom who suffered a complication after birth at St. Elizabeth's Medical Center, which is a steward hospital in Brighton. And there was a shortage of supplies at the hospital, and she wasn't able to get the care that she needed in time, and she died. And so there's really real repercussions and what this means for patients, for people, for their lives. Understood. Well, Priyanka, thank you for your reporting on this, and we definitely look forward to how you'll be following this story. So, yeah, we really appreciate you coming through to the Common. Thanks for having me. And that's our show for today. Thank you so much for listening to the Common. If you want to learn more about Stewart Healthcare System and their financial problems, Head on over to WBUR.org to keep an eye on that story because Priyanka and Deb Becker are following that. Also, if you want to get in touch with us, hit us up on Instagram at WBUR The Common or send us an email at The Common at WBUR.org. I'm Daryl C. Murphy, and I will talk to you tomorrow.